emergency. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was super, super excited to get to be chosen for this program, and I'm actually quite pleased that it is the fall edition. I am something of an introvert most of the time, so spending large quantities of time alone in seclusion was sort of like this wonderful vacation sound to me. I was like, I don't have to talk to anybody, really? Okay. <laughs> Sounds nice. Um, you know, turns out maybe it wasn't quite as like reclusive as I thought it would be. However, it's actually turned out to be quite nice. Yeah, it's turned out to be quite nice to uh, make some very unexpected friends and hiking companions. Though I will make a note that if you wish to see wildlife, they are not the right people to hike with. <laughs> Like, yeah, that looks right, and then you put it in the paint, and you're like, this is far too much. 
I don't know what to do with this. Um, so those are finished products. So today's project is you guys are going to assemble your own. And then as you can see, there are a couple water cups hanging around. I've got some gouache paint. So this will actually answer the question for anyone who's asking what is gouache. Today you can find out if you would like. Um, after you assemble your brush, um, I've got some little lids to those cups. You can use them like a tiny palette and either use the paper that you've been working on or I have these cute little like watercolor postcards. Um, so you can feel free to take one or two. They're on the back. Um, the front just looks like this, so you can play around to use the brush that you have made. Um, so yeah. So I'll just kind of briefly, I'm going to walk through the process start to finish that I was doing, and then I will, at somewhere in the middle process, sort of show you where you guys are going to pick up, just in interest of time, and I know that not everyone is inclined as I am. I love tiny projects and I realized that not everyone is <laughs> not everyone is on that page so I, I tried to find a way to modify this project so that everyone could participate more comfortably um, so I started with trying to find the appropriate sort of material for handle and sticks about pencil size are pretty straightforward so I basically spent the better part of six hours with this mat knife um, doing this to prep all of these sticks that you now have in front of you. <laughs> basically carving tiny little pointy weapons. Um, and when you go to assemble yours, you'll kind of see why the like my, my discovery was that the thinner and pointier it was, the easier it was to assemble. So despite the fact that it looks kind of creepy and ship-like, We'll just kind of we'll let that one go because it does seem to help. So normally I would spend time, you know, if I wanted to manipulate and make this more decorative, I could sand it, I could carve it, I could paint it, you know, to make the handle piece more interesting. I'm also kind of a fan of the like naked wood look, but I did bring some sandpaper. If people are feeling, you know, adventurous. So the next portion is you can actually see where I cut hair off of this particular strip, which is what you guys all have in front of you in that little like bundle. Um, but if you'll note, the bundles that I've handed out are quite tidy. They have a nice little like cutoff. They're all more or less the same shape and size. Um, obviously, that is not how that process starts. <laughs> it's like getting a haircut. So what I would do is I take a very thin strip of masking tape kind of just lay it down so that I have somewhere to mount my bristles. Literally just take a clump. So this is in case we want to go find our home. Yeah, in case you're stuck in the woods and get really bored and like you need to make some art in order to survive, like you'll be able to <laughs> <laughs> use a beautiful paintbrush and you will still starve, but you will be able to feel accomplished in the process. <laughs> Coke berries. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a multi use tool. Like, you know, you can use it to kind of get down to that spot you can't quite reach. <laughs> so, take your bundle, and then I would, this is the point at which I realized that this was perhaps not start to finish a project that everyone needed to do. Um, I found that tweezers were very helpful, and then I took very gooey glue, not like the super glue, which is on the table in front of you, which you guys will have to share, which I have faith that that is something everyone can handle. Um, so this is how all the little bristle bundles that are in front of you were constructed. So we got the glue. Always recap. <laughs> so once that's done, get this guy. Uh, hair, glue, stuff to tape, which all sounds absolutely awful if you have long hair or have <laughs> ever gotten anything stuck in your hair. And basically just use the tweezers to roll into a little bundle. Which doing this in front of a lot of other people is a little harder. So each and every bundle was made in this way. And then Little about super glue because masking tape is great, but the adhesive on it is maybe a little bit wanting. So super glue is always a nice little extra bump. We now have a very gooey but complete button. 
So, bristles. And this is more or less what they all look like after they were assembled. So I made like 30 of these, and I only got like two of them stuck to my fingers with the super glue. So I felt like that. I felt like those were good, good numbers. Um, the next portion is. This is more of, at least from one side, is more of an aesthetic item. I cut everything down so it had like that nice kind of clean crop top on it. And this is the part where knowledge about brushes as an object and how you use them would definitely inform how you would organize this. Um, for the moment, I just sort of trimmed away the hair that looked kind of rough or weird or like, you know, like it was going to leave marks in places you didn't want it to. Basically said, however much time I needed or wanted to shape that, and now we more or less have the same object that is sitting in front of you. So this is the point at which I felt that it would be suitable to share this process in terms of you guys also doing this. Um, so I will assemble mine, and then I will walk around, and anybody who has questions, needs help, we can kind of go from there. You will find, because mine is going to go together a lot more easily, because the glue I just put in here is wet, so it's going to allow me to basically secure it much more easily. The glue in yours should be fairly hard, so if you do have any problems, um, I have some very pointy tweezers which kind of just help break apart the bristles a little bit to receive it. Um, but this is why the pointy end is kind of important. So basically, literally just push it down onto the pointy end, and now we're on. And then you may have noticed when you walked in, there's tape hanging on the inner portions of the tables. So this, on the kind of inner ring here, and there's probably way more than anybody's going to need, but this is basically to secure your bristles. Oh. I'm just going to wrap. And you can also, I didn't do this because Brad just forgot, but so the super glue, just put a little dot on the end of your pointy, the pointy end of the stick, and that will help hold the bristles in place because the glue will set up very quickly, and then wrap the bristles to the shaft. And it might take more than one, so you might take some of the tape and like rip it into slightly smaller sections and do one wrap, and then maybe do another one that just kind of holds it on a little bit better. Um, All right, so there we go. That's more or less how it works. Also, the way I assembled it, you can kind of see how it's got this like umbrella situation going on. It wasn't super effective as a tool. Um, so the next set that I did with the feathers, I opted, this is way too long, but this is a much like softer portion of the feather where like the down, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so the hair actually acts as a thinner Yeah, well, so material. hair was interesting because it has a much more rigid quality, but it's not as coarse as that. Um, so it's much more productive for paints that have a lot of body. So anything like what we were using in there, because you could see you could flip the cup upside down, and when no water, it's very, like, squishy. Um, so the bristles will kind of pick that up. Whereas something soft like that yeah. is much better served towards something that's more of an ink quality um, with a lot of water and a little bit less pigment. Huh. Uh, I've, been I've been learning a lot. I've been learning a lot about viscosity. Um, so intermix around on the surfaces. I'm interested in this story. So, um, so I saw that, and that was sort of what prompted the whole like make your own um, pigment kind of idea. Where I was like, well, charcoal is like one of the oldest forms of like you know human pigment that we've been using. Um, so I was like, and this one kind of has like a really interesting sort of um, origin. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even remember where I found kind of this one. Yeah. This one? Um, yeah, so, yellow, yellow yep, and this is actually also from Yellow Bay, just in that more orange tone. I don't remember where it comes. Did you just break it down? Then? Yeah, so I basically used rocks. <laughs> I used rocks to crush the rocks um, into a much finer powder, and then I actually went through a full blown nerd situation and you take the powder that you've crushed up and it's usually pretty fine but if you mix it so you put it into water and just give it a little shake all the really heavy particulates that didn't like crush up finely will sink really fast right. and the much smaller particulates will remain suspended in the water so you basically pour off the water and set aside the heavy particulates which are chunky and kind of will give it like a much chalkier quality um, and then let the wow. water evaporate as the foil and just kind of left it outside. Yeah, well, act as a paint? Yeah, um, so these are actually translucent tests that I did. Um, with, so the reddish is the orange, this is the yellow, and this is the charcoal. Um, yeah, so I used linseed oil was sort of the binding agent, so I would, so I powdered it and then mixed a little bit of linseed oil into it to just like give it something that had body. Um, although the charcoal itself is a really adequate marking material, um, so these I have are two pieces of wood in my down by my dander closet. So these are some of the from the flashers fire and then the washers.